Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all having a nice, cool day. It's not like 90s out. We're so used to those 90s, huh? They're going day after day. Oh, we had a great weekend. Um, We are starting a new sermon series today uh, titled 
hard truth. Today's gets a little bit difficult because we think of a God who is loving, who is peaceful, who, who cares for us day after day and wants nothing but the best for us. But then we hear this second part. We want peace, but God's word divides. We're going to look at how God's word divides, but how he still brings that peace and comfort to believers. So join us as, as we have this great uh, worship service today. Uh, thank you for everybody joining in online. Uh, we're going to begin with our first hymn found on page four, O Church Arise. Please stand. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In, pre in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift of grace that we come into your presence and offer true and faithful service. Grant that our worship on earth may always be pleasing to you, and in the life to come, give us the fulfillment of what you have promised. 
through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23. Here we see how much God cares for his people. Am I a God who is only nearby, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? Can anyone hide in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord? I have heard what the prophets who prophesy lies in my name have said. They say, I have had a dream. I have had a dream. How long will this be in their hearts of these lying prophets? These prophets proclaim the fantasies of their own hearts. They think that they can make my people forget my name with the dreams each one tells his neighbor, the way their fathers forgot my name because of Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell his dream, but let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What is chaff to do with grain, declares the Lord? Is it not my word? Is not my word like a fire, declares the Lord? And like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? The word of the Lord. We continue by singing the psalm of the day found on page 10. Our second reading comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. This will also serve as our sermon text. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us get rid of every burden and the sin that so easily ensnares us, and let us run with patient endurance the race that is laid out for us. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, who is the author of our faith and the one who brings it to its goal. In view of the joy set before him, he endured, he endured the cross, dis disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of God's throne. Carefully consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinful people, so that you do not grow weary and lose heart. 
You have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your own blood in your fight against sin. Have you also forgotten the encouragement that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard the Lord's discipline, discipline lightly, and do not become weary of his correction. For the Lord disciplines the one whom he loves, and he corrects every son he accepts. Endure suffering as discipline. God is dealing with you as sons. Is there a son whose father does not discipline him? If you are not disciplined and all of us have received it, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. In addition, we have earthly fathers who disciplined us and we respected them. Should we not, should we not submit even more to the father of the spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while, according to what seemed best to them. But God disciplines us for our good, so that we may have a share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant when it is happening, but painful. Yet later, it yields a peaceful harvest of righteousness for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your weak hands and feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather healed. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Please stand in honor of the gospel. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the book of Luke, chapter 12. Here we see Jesus saying our, our theme for the day. He didn't come for peace, but for division. I came to throw fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already ignited, but I have a baptism to undergo, and how distressed I am until it is finished. Do you think that I came to bring peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. Yes, from now on, there will be five divided in one household, three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated as we continue with the hymn of the day.
Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come before you this morning for your guidance, for the joy that we find in your word, but also to understand what you mean by causing a division. Help us run our race as you have planned for us. In your name we pray. Amen. I don't know how many of you know this about me. I'm sure you probably don't see it as you look up at me right now. Um, but I used to run cross country in high school. And, and I had this race, my last race my freshman year, that I learned some very valuable life lessons. And I thought it was really ironic that, that we have this, this book about, or this Hebrew text today, about running a race. So what I thought I would do today is explain what I learned, and then attach it to our text. I learned three valuable lessons, as you can see up on the screen. And as we go through this account, I want you to realize what the writer of the Hebrews is telling us to do. Keep on running. All right, to kind of get you into the, the, the storyline here, I, I was really trying to find a picture. I really, in quotations, I really didn't want to find a high school picture like that. But imagine a freshman who never ran really before in his life. And all of a sudden, he gets to high school, and he's running pretty good. In fact, so good that he, he was running varsity as a freshman. We didn't have a lot of runners, but it felt cool saying you were a freshman running varsity. We came to our sectionals, and the sectionals is the last, so it was, it was October. It was pretty cold. In fact, if I remember, it was 20 degrees out, and wind chill was like 13. And uh, if you've ever seen a cross-country uniform, yeah, there's not much cover for that. But we were excited. We were getting ready in the line. And, and if you've ever been to a meet, you get about three feet of width to fit the whole team. Pretty tight. Well, I was ready, and a senior turned and said to me, Lucas, you're going to lead us today. You can do it, Lucas. I go, what? I've never been in the front. I don't know what to do. This is awesome. A, a senior who I looked up to, who I tried to imitate how to run, he just told me to do this. You couldn't believe how excited I was. That's the first section of our story today. Cool thing about that is that you and I also look up to people. Look up to people who came before us. In fact, the book, the chapter in front of us, chapter 11, is probably a very well-known chapter. It's the chapter of faith. Heroes of faith are listed. All of the Old Testament famous guys that you know, prophets, everybody is listed there. How many do you look up to? Is it Abraham waiting for his son to pass down his inheritance? Is it, is it Moses as he stands and puts up his staff right before the Red Sea? Or is it Samson as he pulls down the pillars on his enemies? They're all pretty cool, right? They all had this, this thing you remember them by or multiple things. Same goes for our life here, though. We also have people we look up to, right? Maybe you have a, a parent who, who lived this Christian life and you look up to them and remind yourself of that day after day. 
Maybe it's a grandmother or a grandfather who did this thing and you just recount that action over and over and over again. I want to be like them. Or that friend or sibling who said that line that you quote day after day. Those are people we look up to, right? We want to be like them. Why do we do that? Why do we, why do we listen to them? What, what gives them such authority and honor that we should give our attention to them? Well, it's not because they're Einstein, although someone might say, oh, yeah, I had, my uncle was Einstein, right? But they're probably not here. They, they weren't this brilliant person that went to years and years of school to live that Christian life, and now you know exactly how to follow them. No, it's because they encouraged you. They encouraged you by their words or their actions when you were down, when you were tired, when you were, you were tripping yourself as you were running your race. Well, how can we look at them for hope and comfort? They gave us that encouragement because they got through that same struggle sometime in their life. They know what it's like to go through something that's difficult. Or maybe they didn't even realize they were doing it. They were just showing their Christian love by the way they lived their life. But we noticed. And we remembered, right? That's why we look up to them. That's why we can look to them and say, yes, I want to be like them. I want to imitate them. Our text today calls them clouds of witnesses. Witnesses that, that we look up to. Witnesses of faith that we go, that is the example of faith I want to live by. I want to be like so-and-so because they showed their faith by the way they spoke, by the way they acted. And that's the first lesson I learned hearing from that senior. Listen to those who ran before us. All right, back to, back to the race. Butterflies are doing somersaults in my stomach as I'm waiting for the gun to go off. I have all these ideas in my head of how fast I want to run. I, I want to have my personal record. I have all these things that I go, I can beat so-and-so. And then the gun goes off, and I sprint my hardest. I run, and I run, and I run, and all of a sudden, I realize where I am. I'm like 50 to 100 yards ahead of everybody else. You know a cross-country race, which is about a 5K, 3.1 miles, probably shouldn't be doing that. And I run around the corner, and I see my coach. He's at the first mile marker. And he looks up at me, kind of gives me that, looks down at a stopwatch, looks back up at me, and starts shouting, Lucas, what are you doing so far up here? You're not supposed to be up here. You're supposed to pace yourself. Oh, I could tell he was mad. And he was right, too. I couldn't run that race. It was impossible for me to keep up that speed for the whole entire race. And one after another, everybody started passing me. Man, I was embarrassed. I had all these things going through my head going, oh my goodness, he's going to yell at me. I, I was so frustrated with myself. But here we are, looking at this race in Hebrews. A race that isn't a 100-meter sprint. A race that isn't even a 5K like I was running. It was a long race, though. Race that you needed endurance, perseverance to push forward. Races, a race that, that had hardships in it. That if you tried to run a perfect race, you were going to stumble at some point. And it wasn't just going to be once. There were, there were traps set all over to ensnare you, to stop you from running, to trip you up, to cause your, your focus to leave, to entice you to turn a different path. Time after time again, we, we think we can, we can live that perfect life, run that perfect race, and then we get tripped up. And then something comes up that we put ahead of the Lord. Or we start living the sinful lifestyle and, and we kind of get a blind eye to that sin that we know it's a sin. Or maybe we, we have an excuse in our head that, that that sinful lifestyle that we do have, that little bit of sin, that's okay because others are doing it. What's happening to our race? Oh, we're getting distracted. We're turning left. We're turning right. We're running too fast. We're running too slow, right? We could never run that race perfectly. But guess what? 
There was someone who ran for us. I want you to look at verses 2 and 3 again. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer or the author and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. You may think that your life here on earth, the race that you are running as a Christian, it's all about you. What shoes you have on, what actions you are doing, what things you are saying. What does the writer to the Hebrews say? Fix your eyes on Jesus. That's what matters in our race. That's what matters because a cloud, the cloud of witnesses could not have done anything for our faith. That cloud of witnesses didn't do anything so that we can gain heaven someday. It was Jesus. He ran for us. He endured all those hardships, all those things that could trip him up and ensnare him. Didn't. The things that trip you up in life, the, the temptations, the sins that, that partake in your life, he didn't get tripped up by those. He endured them. Think of how hard of a lifestyle, uh, the, the race that he had to run. A race that's far more difficult than ours, right? Day after day, the devil knew if he could just get Jesus to sin once, he won. Do you think the devil tried harder on him? Absolutely. He had a brother in Christ betray him. He was spit on, whipped, and nailed to a cross. He didn't deserve that. So why did he do it? Because he loves you. He longed and looked forward to the enjoyment of that victory of his race. That victory included you and me because he knew as believers we would join him in heaven. He ran for us because he wanted us to join him in heaven. That's how much he cared about us. That's why he ran his race to save us. We may get distracted in life. We may have all these temptations come before us, all these different things that try and trip us up. But that's what we should focus on as we run our race. Look at the one who ran for us. He ran it perfectly. So when we do stumble, we know we don't have to make up for it. We don't have to earn his favor, earn his trust, earn his love. It's already done. It's already solidified. The race is over for him already. The victory for us is certain. All right, part three of this race. Finally, I got to the finish line. I was upset. I did not want to see my coach. Coach Kerr, I knew, was a man, sometimes could get really angry. So you know what I did? I hid. My parents' car was there, and I, I, I hid in there. My dad eventually found me. He saw what I was doing. He knew that I didn't run a very good race in coaches or my eyes. But he encouraged me to go to my coach and talk with him, confront him, let him at least get his words out. So I said, okay, I can do that. Came to my coach, he put his arm around me, and he explained to me how important it is not to start off so quickly, how to pace yourself, and so on. Man, I knew I was embarrassed. I knew that, that people were going to look down at me. But my coach reminded me, right? He encouraged me. For those of you who have played sports before, have you ever had a coach that maybe you hated or you thought he hated you? Sometimes it can feel that way. When they make you run and run and run and run and run and they never let you stop, it feels like. Or they make you come early or stay late. Or they make you eat healthy and you can't eat the things you enjoy. Or you have to say no to your friends because coach added another practice and I have to get there on time. Man, does my coach hate me. Sometimes you could even feel like your coach is your enemy, right? Ah, man. So why does our coach do that? Why do coaches push their, their players to that extreme? Is it because they hate their players? No. 
is because they want to see them suffer. Hopefully not. <laughs> a good coach knows how important it is for that player to get better. The coach knows he needs to put in effort. He needs to put in dedication. He needs to push aside all those things that are distracting him and focus on the goal of whatever sport, whatever goal you have. That's the coach's duty, right? That's why they took that position. It may look like they're your enemy and they hate you at times, but they're pushing you and pushing you and training you. They know what it takes. And this is where our theme of the day comes in. We want peace, but God's word divides. We want a peaceful, loving God who cares about us every single day and doesn't let anything bad happen to us in our lives. And then we hear the second part of our text. Do some of these phrases sound like a loving God? Uh, shedding your own blood? Enduring hardship? Discipline that is going to be painful? That doesn't sound like a loving God. That doesn't sound like a, even a, a friendly coach. <laughs> sounds like he's our enemy. It sounds like he, he has it out for us. But boy, is it important to take these words in context, right? Because the words that started are verses 5 and 6. Here's what they say. My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. Who is the son here? His favorite person ever to live here on earth? No. It's each and every one of us. Every single believer. He has this, this view, this imagery saying that we are his children. He cares about us so much that he wants to discipline us. He doesn't just want us to have faith. He wants our faith to grow. He wants to train our faith like an athlete. He cares about us. He knows what it takes. He knows the hardships we go through in life and how important it is to keep moving forward in our faith. We just come complacent. Like any athlete, you're not going to get better. But he cares about us. He loves us, so he sends us hardships. He sends us punishment so that we grow in faith. But there's more. He knows how difficult a life is on here on earth because he lived it as Jesus. He knows the temptations. He knows the sins. And he knows our weaknesses. So he encourages us every single step on the way. He tells us to keep on running, keep on running, because he knows what the end goal is and how you and I can make it through Christ. Christ already lived for us, not those witnesses, right? Christ did it all. To join him, that is where our glory is. Our glory is found in heaven, and that is the final lesson today. Learn from the Father's discipline. Don't think negatively about the Lord because he sends some hardship our way. He is using that to strengthen you, whatever hardship it may be. Run your race. Let your light shine as you run your race onto that goal of heaven. Knowing that the one who lived for us is already completed and our, our, our heaven is, is certain. But as we run our race, perseverance and endurance... Know that there is one watching out for us, disciplining us, training us, so that when that evil does come, we may push it aside and let, not let it trip us. Ask for that encouragement. Look to God for that encouragement because he knows you. He knows your race. Amen. Please stand. And join me in confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed found on page 14. We confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we continue with the prayer of the church. Almighty and everlasting God, you search all hearts and know all thoughts. Your eyes are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Grant us now as we approach the throne of your grace, running the race marked out for us. Remember not the sins of our youth nor our transgressions, but because of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, pardon our iniquity. By the indwelling of your Holy Spirit, save us from the lusting after evil things, from unbelief or other great and shameful sins. Provide for your church pastors and teachers who lead your flock to the ritual rock, Jesus Christ, that your people may drink the pure water of eternal life. Guard and defend our homes that parents may be, may be kept in the bonds of love and rule their children well, nourishing them in truth and righteousness. We pray for all who might be ill in body, mind, or spirit for all who may be in danger, for all who may be anxious or perplexed, for all who may be suffering some kind of disappointment or defeat. Be present with them in their affliction. Show them the way out of their troubles and save them for your mercy's sake. Heavenly Father, you did not spare your own son, but freely gave him up for us all. Mercifully grant these and all other acceptable petitions, which you read in our hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen. As we continue with the offering, please remember to fill out the connection card if you haven't done so already and drop it off in there. Thank you. We continue with our next hymn on pages 14 and 15.
Please stand as we close with prayer. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated. We continue with our closing hymn.
Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship today. A special welcome to any guests we have with us. Just a reminder for everybody, you can join us after the service downstairs for some fellowship. And then around 1030, we will have our Bible study. Today, we begin a new study going through the book of Colossians. A few announcements that I'd like to highlight for us. Um, On August 15th, We have a Shepherd Kids planning meeting. That'll be at 10.30 a.m. I believe that's here at church, right? Does anybody know? Pretty sure. Yep, here at church. Okay. Um, 10.30 a.m. here at church. We'll have that meeting. Um, Also on on Monday, uh, later that day at 7 p.m., we have our our final softball game. Um, And everybody's welcome to to, uh, play with us if they ever want, but it's our final one. Um, it's at Noel Ridge Park. Um, we're we're in first place, so if you want to root us on for the for the final game here, that would be nice um, to to kind of wrap up the the season of, of all the fun we had together there. Uh, something coming up at the end of August here is the the grief support group, um, which will be taking place in North Liberty. That starts Wednesday, August twenty fourth. It'll be a thirteen week um, kind of different videos you watch and a session you go through with a workbook. It's uh, standalone lessons and such, so you don't have to come to all of it. Um, but if you could pray about that and support us as we try to reach more people in the North Liberty community, that would be great. Um, that goes uh, for 13 weeks starting on the t- Wednesday, August 24th, and it runs from 6 to 7.30. A little bit after that, we have our Vinton Boom Fest, um, which we're, uh, our fellowship committee has decided uh, this is a, a wonderful opportunity to come together. There is a little bit of a cost to it. It's $50 per person. Um, the, the event starts at dusk and it ends around 1030. And it's, it's a little bit of a drive. It's in, it's in Vinton. Um, but you, at 6 p.m., you can depart from the church parking lot or, or carpool or from your own home. Just let La, Lavanda know your plans so we can know how many people are, are coming. Um, there's food you can get there. Um, all these different options there for that. Uh, sounds like it's a, a very good time if you'd like to uh, attend that as well. Uh, and then coming up in a few months from now, um, but not too far away, is the LWMS Fall Rally which will be on October 29th, 2022. And we will be hosting it here at our Good Shepherd campus. Um, Look for more details to follow after that. Um, One more thing is um, we we have another opportunity coming up uh, for um, rolling on for life. Um, If you'd like to volunteer for that, uh, there's sign-up sheets in the Narthex back here and downstairs. Uh, This is an opportunity to to get together, play some games, and support each other. Maybe those who who like playing games or uh, have struggled with different, you know, depression or things like that in life um, as well. Um, So if you'd like to be a a part of that, you can volunteer for that. And there's some sign-up sheets back there for you as well. Uh, Other than that, look forward to seeing you guys downstairs. Uh, A wonderful opportunity to... Enjoy company with one another and then dig into God's word a little bit as well. May God bless your week. Thank <laughs> you.